get Miss Tammy up here. They're going over some last minute technical things. You ready, dear? All right, come on up here. Right on. Awesome. You're terrific. Thank you for a great first hour, Tammy, and we're looking forward. I'm looking forward to hearing your presentation again the third hour, second hour. So let's welcome Tammy back to the stage. She's going to tell us the rest of the story. You're all set. You are. When I heard that your missions conference theme was to God be the glory, I just, the Lord gave me just a sense of peace because I knew he confirmed to me that I was supposed to speak with you today because that is just one of three phrases I use to close all my correspondence and my emails just before I sign my name. To God be the glory. And when you think of that second portion, Great things he has done. It just truly takes the pressure off because it's just not about us. And it's not about our ability or our lack of ability. It is only about our availability. Now, I told you there are three phrases. So the second one is dreaming big for the Aztecs. And I dream big. Boy, praise the Lord. God wants you to dream big. And dreaming big is going to look different for each one of you. I will expand more about what Dreaming Big looks for, for the Aztecs. But the third slide, the third way that I sign all my correspondence is like my mother did. In Christ for the Aztecs. Now what does in Christ mean? Well, we say brothers and sisters in Christ. But for me, when I sign that, it means I am operating only within the power given to me by God. And that I am available functioning through him, and that I desire for him to use me. And I know that I have no power or ability apart from him, but that I also desire for the Aztec people to be found in Christ, redeemed by him and known by him. My, your ability, or your lack of ability, and really your availability is my theme for today. It is not about your ability. It is only about your availability. Ken Houts writes in a small book, You Are a Miracle Waiting to Happen. That availability means giving God opportunities to do miracles through you. Aztec ministry exists because individuals, those who served on the field, those who have given over the past 50 years, and those of us who just pray and maybe are never able to give, all of you have chosen to be available to God. There it is. Advance one there. Advance that next. That's you see some technical. See, this is my fault. <laughs> there we go. So all of us have chosen to be available. Praise the Lord. Here's a picture of my parents holding their life's work. Three complete Bibles. There were many steps in between. So they began initial language study. They wrote reading primers to improve the literacy in the village. And then they also had a language course that's been used in universities here in the United States. They then went to New Testaments and also hymnals, but then complete Bibles. Here's my dad working on translation. That's just a typical scene of my childhood. So we had lots of manuscripts out, and they did know some Greek and Hebrew. But my mother was really the driving force of translation, but my dad was the details man. But praise the Lord, they got it done. We believe the Lord protects his word. We're just so thankful. Here's a round table view of them reviewing Isaiah. They're reviewing Isaiah there. And that's Peter. He's got the arrow there. He started in 1991. He works with me on a daily basis. Now when the manuscripts are polished and ready to go, Wycliffe has checked them, all the experts have checked them, they will send those scripts to South Korea and they are printed there. And this is a barge with our Bibles coming from South Korea all the way to the Mexican coast. 
And one of those containers has our Bibles. Next slide, we've got a picture of the shipping container unloading there. And this Cirilo, the next one, Cirilo is uh, unloading. Now listen, he's the one I tease that I'll let you rest tomorrow. We do that, seriously, that's like every, every two, two days. The next slide will show a picture of a Bible dedication where they were able to buy Bibles. Now how do we distribute those 32,000? Here's a picture of Cole Porter's. So the man on the left is Epifanio. He was our first man to study the word with my parents. He's passed away. But then the man on the right, Jose Carpio. Now my kids will tell you, especially my older girls, he is our Billy Graham of the Huasteca. He's responsible for sharing the Jesus film with tens of thousands of people. And when he calls me, he calls me about once a month. He texts me maybe a little more than that. But once a month he calls me with a vision or a need or something he might want us to do. He was actually the, the beginning of our first website was Jose Carpio called me. And I, I'm just so thankful for him. He's also a plumber and works on our facility there. This is another image of Bible distribution. The mothers come in from market, and there's a boy there with 48 New Testaments. He will carry it like that all the way back to the truck stop, get in a cattle truck, you know, hold those bars all the way back up the mountain road, and then he will walk at least an hour back to his village after the fork. So that, a lot of distribution happened that way, and they could buy wholesale and then earn a little if they sell, sold them in the village. Now the next slide there. We talked this morning about we've distributed 32,000 Bibles, and my goal is 100,000 Bibles. Now the Gideon Pocket New Testaments, they're actually printed here in Tennessee, and I've got a bid and everything. They're only $1.60 to print. So I was excited, right? Boy, that sounds reasonable. They only do print runs of 40,000. Okay, unless you guys have an inside scoop, and maybe one of you do, we can get a lower print quantity, but that's what they told me. So that's over $63,000 times three. Well, you know the Lord. We know that we're just laying that before him. If he wants to do it, he'll do it. And if I, we wait, we wait. But that's just one thing that would give us something people could carry with them as they go, and also we could distribute in the medical brigades more easily than the, the large Bibles in the back. Now, it's important for me to mention that because Wycliffe Bible Translators has always stayed scriptures focused, we are able to work non-denominationally throughout all of our region, and we have a massive network of Christians. And uh, they believe the work belongs to them, especially now that my parents have passed away, they just feel like the work belongs to them. The Aztec Christians, they want to serve one another. And God calls them to witness and share their faith. And he talks with them. Praise the Lord, he talks with them. Our base of operations I showed you this morning was our ministry center there. Now the first project I took over after my mom, she passed away from brain cancer. She was here in our area actually with us much of her last days. And she was translating the last hymns, making the edits on this third hymnal. She's responsible for translating 480 hymns, in addition to the bulk of the Bible translation. Now, I tell you what, going uh, up those mountain curves, just like the dragon, boy, you know, I didn't want to read. So my mother and I, we translated hymns. It was quite, it was quite extraordinary. And that hymn audio, this is a picture of a guitar conference. So when we had the hymns and we had translated them, we wanted them to be singing them in the indigenous village. So of course we had to teach those melodies. And some are Mexican melodies, but many are the melodies you're familiar with. So we would call all the pastors we knew and we would schedule a guitar conference. And for about two weeks, sometimes one week, we would bring them in and we would teach them to play guitar. They didn't have to have any ability. And then we would teach them the melodies and also devotions and other things. So they would go home really equipped. And when we would have a group, so we'd have beginners and a middle ability playing guitar, and then our more polished ones, they would learn to pick and do all sorts of stuff. But what God did was we would record those performances after a guitar conference, and that has given us audio for our radio station. All those years of guitar conferences were saved, and that's how we fill much of our radio time and I tune in I tune in 50% of the time I tune in it's a hymn that my mother translated or that we that we recorded I just globally can you believe that 
broadcast globally now with the radio. The next slide, this is me, and then me with the children. So the second project I took over was I knew they love color, and I wanted to translate a children's Bible. And um, my parents had, had, had just given me that idea, but I didn't know what book to choose. So Ken Taylor, you know, I knew that he was solid and had worked on the New Living translation. My dad had really loved that translation. So I chose his book. This is the third volume. It was the Bible in pictures for little eyes. It was a big rectangular book in the 60s, and then they've had, this is the new cover. But I contacted Moody Press, Moody Publishers, and I asked them if we could receive permission to translate. And they said, well, how many? You know, you're going to have to have enough to get on our print run. So I didn't know. I thought, okay, 5,000 each, 5,000 for each dialect. So I said, 15,000. Well, then they called me and said, it'd be about $5 each to print. And I just, I had already kind of got the ball rolling, but we had zero money saved. That was $75,000 we needed. And the Lord provided. Amen. And by the time we finished the translation, we had the funds in hand. Our daughter Evelyn in the back there, she prepared 1,150 PDF files. About six months, she, she never left her desk. The boys will tell, her, tell you she never left her desk. But I had just delivered Lillian, so I didn't go to the Bible, the children's Bible dedications. If you'll see some pictures here of the children's Bible dedication. That's what took out the reaction in the white shirt there. They were so thankful because they love color. And we're the only ones doing any literature in their language. There's the children reading. And then uh, next, their little girl. And then our distribution table that we went over there a little while ago. Now, this next slide, you'll see we also have four websites. So Zagarba was the impetus for the first one. That was a scripture website. So Wycliffe Bible Translators puts all of their PDFs, Bible PDFs, scriptureearth.org. Okay? It's a marvelous site. If you have never been there, please go. It has save it on your phone because you're going to run into someone maybe from Cambodia and you're going to be able to say, here's a Cambodian Bible. Please. It's, it's just, it's a beautiful site. But listen, how do you tell an Aztec person, go find your... The, the PDF on, on, at scriptureearth.org, S-C-R-I-P-T-U-R-E, you know, E-A-R-T-H, it's just not going to happen. You know, that's just too complicated. So it needed to be in their language. So Jose Carpio said, Tammy, we need a scriptures website. So that was Thanksgiving. Our daughter Evelyn, she prepared that website in three days. And you'll see, um, this, is, this is a different website. This is our topical concordance website. This has nearly 100 topics where someone can select anger, or marriage, or um, parenting, or um, you know, sexual immorality, I mean, just any topic. We have almost 100 topics, and addictions. And so it is really provided material for the pastors that have never had seminary training. So they have two years of messages on this website. Seven years of, of research went into this website. Now, our daughter Jacqueline, she worked hard the entire summer. She dedicated to running the, the loading all of the scriptures. If you visit, so if you go to this website, it's huastecanahuatl.com. You can click Oriental, and then you'll see all the topics. But also, if you go to Mas, the very top, Mas means more, there'll be English. And you can click the English, and they'll tell you all the topics that are there. Okay, the next website you'll advance is the radio archives website. And you see there's 2012 forward archives there. And if you click the radio en vivo, that is live internet radio right there. And um, that's Peter there on the right. Okay, this one is our, next one is our scriptures website. This is just PDFs from Genesis to Revelation. It also has some stories and other things. The next website is a evangelical uh, music in Nahuatl. And you'll see that green bar at the bottom, you can't read it, but it says, do you know where you're going when you die? All the websites, every page has that there. Clicks to an internal page where we have 
the gospel message presentation. It's essentially Romans Road, but it introduces them to who Jesus Christ is and what he's done. So that's powerful. Now, if you'll advance. So I'm going to tell you some behind the scenes of mobility cards. Now, I first told you that I, Ben was the one who wanted to ride them. We started visiting. Okay, so then we ordered 149 cards. Now, they required five references. It was very, very intensive paperwork to be approved, right? Each one of these cards has is at least $300 in materials and 30 man hours to assemble the cards, you know, to build and fabricate the cards. Volunteer man hours. So they don't want just any organization <laughs> distributing them, of course. Well, we began the paperwork. I had to nag a, a little bit, the, kind of the, the director there, because he's ex overextended. But boy, we got approved by February. And so if you'll advance the slide. OK, so July 23rd, the full semi-trailer was loaded at the El Paso border. Okay. I wore an embroidered blouse because I wanted all the children to be praying all day long that it would cross. We had $5,000 in the bank. We had no idea how much customs would say that they wanted. There have been stories where Mexico's requested you know, $15,000, just right there, on the spot, for something to come across, you know, some medical item. There's also stories where they have things impounded two years. We had no idea. I mean, we had no idea if they would cross that day. So. I was just busy, and Lillian, little five-year-old over there, she was out in the yard, and she was bit by 11 fire ants. She came in crying and, and swelling up, so I soaked her in the tub, and I've never done that before, but it was spectacular. It really reduced everything, boy. But I sat there at the tub, trying to text and communicate, praying and sending money, and I had to, you know, just stay on it, but I sat by her. And there, one of the messages I was writing in Aztec, so I write in all three languages, and all their conjugations are different. Now, Tracy Walker will tell you, I was trying to come up with a verb, and that verb has, it was going to be a plural noun with a past tense verb, and then it was going to have a plural direct object. That's all in one word, okay? So some of the dialects like an E or an I at the end, and some of them like a J in the middle. So I was just scrolling through my phone, and I thought, oh, I, I'll check the Psalms, because Psalms has plural, plural nouns and plural direct objects. And I just want to see the conjugation. Remember, because I don't like to write it wrong. So I think that kind of reinforces it in your mind. So I often look in the scriptures, because I can just see a rule, a conjugation rule. So I looked in Psalms, and I got on my phone, and I scrolled Psalms. Psalms 1, 2, 3, went on. I didn't see the rules, so I just quit. And I went on, changed the whole sentence, put a new verb in that I knew, and then I started closing my pages. And I'm just sitting there. The Lord says, Tammy, what if I was trying to show you something in advance here? The only thing highlighted in blue was Psalms 918. The whole PDF there, white, blue, is this verse. In Aztec, I read, for the needy will not always be forgotten, nor the hope of the afflicted perish forever. And I knew right then the carts would get across. They got across for $900, a semi-trailer, semi-trailer. Well, they went 20 hours south and then 14 hours north and rain and all sorts of other obstacles. And when they got to our town, you can see right here, when they got to our town, they couldn't come right to our ministry center front door. They had to park on a main street. It was Sunday night. Now, mind you, it's hot. I told you it was 109 earlier. And our team's beginning to unload, and six officers, police officers, show up. And they were, they were not happy. We were blocking an entire lane of traffic, and they were really being ugly. They were threatening the driver. They were threatening to impound the whole lot of the shipment. And our team, you know, they just, they just didn't know what to do. And I'm, I'm over here, you know, I'm here in Tennessee. But our director, Diego, arrived on the scene from nine hours away right then, gathered the police officers together, and he said, we have permission from the mayor to be here. And we have, she knows we're bringing in mobility carts to distribute to the leg disabled. Praise the Lord, he had gotten prior permission because it wasn't really essential. But he said, you know, I can call her 
like you'd like, well then the police officers just all softened up, right? And then that police officer, his name's Napoleon, he said, what do you have in there? We've got mobility cards for the leg disabled. Would you believe, he said, who, who can receive a card? Well, we're saying anyone. You don't have to be indigenous or Mexican. You don't have to have any faith perspective. Just if you're in need, and, you know, if you're leg disabled, you can receive a card. He broke down. But he said his sister was paralyzed from the waist down. This is Christina. And I told you she assembled her own cart. She was our first recipient. Now let me tell you, right between these two scenes, was they contacted me, they said, Tammy, they told me about the police officer, and they said, but we didn't get his contact information. Well, of course, you know, I'm the, I'm the director, I kind of cringe, you know, I like, you want your team to be on the ball, right? And so I started to pray. So Sunday night, I knew they hadn't gotten his contact information. So Monday goes by, Tuesday goes by, and our team is downtown, and they were borrowing a dental chair. And they happened to see an officer that was there in the crowd. And they said, oh, did you get that cart unloaded, that whole semi-trailer unloaded? Yeah, we did. Tell your chief to come pick up your sister's cart. And so the picture right before that was two police officers, you know, vehicles were outside of our ministry center. That's usually not a good thing. <laughs> but this day, it was a direct answer to prayer. And uh, we can go forward from here. But, okay, so Christina there, she assembled her own cart. Boy, this is, yeah, you can go back to Ishkatlan. Ishkatlan, we distributed 12 carts. Now, this next slide's going to be hard for you to see, but I don't want us to turn away when we see the sufferings of others. This is Maria Teresa. She's had rheumatoid arthritis untreated for 40 years. All of her joints are locked. That's her bedroom. Our team went in there and visited with her, shared the gospel, loved on her. She hasn't walked in 33 years. She's in a sound mind, and she has a, a beautiful daughter caring for her. But she received a pull cart. Mobility Worldwide has three models, large, small, based on your weight, and then this pull cart for arm disabled and leg disabled. So that's Maria Teresa. Pray for her. I've requested a proclaimer with the New Testament in Central, and someday it'll have the Old Testament. But you pray that the Lord ministers to her. Now, Antonio, okay. So dreaming big means you sometimes dream ahead of time. So he went on our, on our list December 27th. We weren't approved till February, but I started a list of recipients before, before it all came to pass in faith. And so he's completely paralyzed from the waist down. You see he's there and has a catheter. And then you see, they sent me the picture. He got it in August, and he had a towel there. And I thought, well, that's, he needs some, some special pants that for uh, someone who's disabled. So I called Jacqueline. I said, I don't have time to shop for them. Honey, you've got to find these, some adaptive clothing. She sent me some lengths, and the black and the navy were $34 each. And the red, fire engine red, $17. He got four pairs of fire engine red his pants like NBA star pants, they snap all the way from the waist down. We got him another pair that was for winter also. But I had, don't have a picture of him in his pants, but I can see in my mind's eye that he is zipping around, unashamed, and full of spirit. Boy, to God be the glory. The man on the left, Jacinto, he lost his leg to diabetes. When he got sick, his wife and children left him. But through the... the Time he was sick, Christians ministered to him, and he's in a church, and he received a cart, and he's serving the Lord. The man on the right, Santos Felipe, he's from a village, Awaweo, Western Village, Western Wapsakanawat, and he hadn't been to church in two years because he had a spinal injury. So he sent me five messages to my phone. It's so fun. My kids be excited. They think Daddy's texting, and then they'll say, Mama, it's an Aztec. <laughs> they'll pass me the phone. But Santos Felipe, he wrote me, Mama? Or he didn't say mama. He said, sister, hermana, I'll be the first one to church. I'll be the last one to leave. I'll set up. I'll sing. I'll worship. Thank you for my cart. Praise the Lord. So here's the videos. I want you to see a time where a, a 
Someone receives a card. This is Mario. Now, our team drove 20 hours to deliver his card. This is a separate pastor, but... Now, the second one, I had to get to, yeah, he's learning to maneuver it. It has a super tight turning radius. This, good, this is a good gift. Now, the next one. They've asked him to share his thoughts of appreciation or how it will impact his life. You're emotional. Thank you. I had plans to purchase one similar this years ago, but I was unable to. Here in my town, I saw someone in a similar cart, and I've dreamed of one for many years. I really need it. God is good. Así es. Es gracias a Dios. Yo sé que tú conoces de Dios. God is. Y quiero que te des cuenta cómo. We want you to realize that this is not about the people here. This is God providing for you. He sees you. He knows the very thoughts in your head before you think them. He knows us perfectly. Thank you. Please don't think of the people here. Put your eyes on God that made it possible. We pray it will be a lot of health and blessing to your life. Thank you. Boy, these stories, can you believe we've distributed 144 in eight weeks? And in each one of those times, we have been able to share the gospel. And this is just proof that God uses willing people. And he desires to direct your steps. And I pray that you have felt the Lord tugging on your heart. And it is my desire that you have seen the great things he has done. And I urge you to make yourself available, just like Jeff was speaking earlier. It is your availability that matters. We are absolutely inadequate. We are powerless. But these miracles do not happen because we are adequate. They happen because the grace of God, and he has heard these prayers. Again, it is not about your ability. It is only about your availability. But we cannot be stagnant. We cannot be apathetic to the sufferings of others. Now, I first want to define stagnance. The definition is showing no activity, having no current or flow, having an unpleasant smell, motionless, immobile, lifeless. Ken Houts writes, you are likely stagnant if you don't spend much time in prayer and you haven't changed much in years. This is one reason why we made the prayer bookmarks. We are hoping that those will get you praying more. But we also cannot be afraid of trying new things. One of the synonyms was lifeless. And I urge you today to let the Lord breathe new life into your spirit. As a mama boy raising ten sons and six daughters, I've had to learn how to think in word pictures. And the first thing that came to my mind was a hotel sign that says vacancy. 
We've all seen them, right? But most of us, we have a sign that says, unavailable. We just flash unavailable. We walk by people that are suffering around us, our neighbors. I want your sign to say available. Now, the point is most of you will say, all right, Tammy, you got to tell me what I need to be available to. Do I have to serve in the nursery? Do I have to do the landscape at church? Maybe make, I know you guys have awesome bake sales, so maybe make cakes for the bake sale. Boy, you don't have to know the vision right now. Okay, God holds the vision. All you need to do is be available. Now you're thinking, Tammy, you do not know what I've done, and you don't know what sins in my life on a daily basis. But sin in your life should not prevent you from declaring to God that you want to be available. Now some of you will say, I will serve when I know the Bible better. Tammy, I don't even know all the books of the Bible. All right? When I'm more spiritually mature, I'll serve. But spiritual maturity is not a prerequisite that determines your ability to serve. Now, others of you are thinking, Tammy, I'm in so much pain of my own. I can't worry about the afflictions of others. You may be facing a divorce or the death of a loved one. Maybe you've lost employment and you think, I'm an emotional wreck myself. <laughs> when my pain lessens, then I will serve. But please do not wait until there is no pain in your life. Don't wait to serve. You can serve and be available to God from a place of pain. Yes. Now, what will happen after you serve? Serving will provide you with spiritual food. You will gain a little experience. You'll know how to do things here at the church, maybe, or other tasks. You'll feel more confident, and you'll feel less shame. Also, wellsprings of courage and determination will swell up within you, and you'll want to fight sin and hate Sin, and God will prune you, and the places that are bearing fruit will bear more fruit, and the places that are dead and lifeless will be pruned. And you will have the desire to serve again, and you will be filled with gratitude and a joy for living. Now, while you're sitting there and hearing this, I will go ahead and call Pastor Steve up to come. We want you to pray quietly in your spirit and either bow your heads or raise your hand. I like to look to the heavens and raise my hand. We want you to commit this day to being available to God. And we want you to dream big. Amen. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Let's give her a hand. Thank you. On that fantastic man oh man and I pray that we all are committed to what she's talking about I, I love your point that don't wait till there's no pain that, no, that's no. never gonna happen right yeah sometimes the most broken person there is in the congregation is the man or woman behind the pulpit yes that's the truth so good stuff are we okay to let them visit with you ask some yes, questions, any we, questions. Have some, mm -hmm. we have just a few minutes maybe five minutes for any questions anybody have anything yes ma'am Yes, um, probably Psalms 91. Oh, well, and I could read it in Aztec. <laughs> well, some of my kids might know it by heart. Who, who knows Psalms 91 there? Could you do it in Aztec? Yeah, we could read. Well, I could, we could get, um, how about John 3.16? John 3.16.
I agree. Yes. For God now, so loved. Now, is yeah. that Aztec or that's all. That was, that was Aztec. Yeah. So how, what's the difference? Um, Just they're, totally they're all different really different. Language. Okay, so the very important thing. So Eastern Huasteca Nahuatl has an estimated, well, let's look, 460,000 people. And then Western is right below that, 450,000. And then Central, 260,000. Now, the Eastern Waseca, they have a different word for the devil. They have a different word for yes. Okay? They have a different word for any positive. Okay? Then they also have a different word for man. Okay? How do you translate scripture with a different word? They have a different word for heaven, they have a different word for earth. Okay? They um, conjugate past tense differently. Okay, that's 500,000 basically. Now the Western, different word for no, different word for man, different word for people, different word for heaven and earth. And so it's, it's the differences. There are a lot of common like roots and, and verbs. And so, um, you know, when I work in, in all three, uh, you know, I, I can, I try very hard. What's really the trickiest thing, okay? This is super tricky. I'm writing to a central speaker about a Western person, okay? Mm -hmm. It's very complex because do I use, if I say that person's going to go, do I use the verb for go for Western or do I use the verb for go for central? So usually I write in what I'm writing in, but it really, um, it's fun. Yeah. And, and I pray, you pray, the Lord will give me the language ability that my mother had. I'm a, actually, I praise the Lord, I have a knack for the editing. And I can, he, he helps me catch errors. Like, so when we went from, our team went from Spanish to Aztec for the Children's Bible, and they sent me their drafts. But the Spanish was not the best translation. You know, Spanish has the formal Spanish, and the Spanish has, you know, the, the casual Spanish. So it was really wrought with error, really. But praise the Lord, I went from English to Aztec, and, um, you know, God was there, and I was able to, uh, you know, really polish the manuscript. So, um, any other question? And, and you thought missionaries just went on vacation, didn't you? <laughs> Tammy, you are a remarkable, okay. remarkable woman. Well, Dr. I Gattis, love these people. You, yes. you must be a great man, Dr. Gaddis, to have such a wonderful wife. Thank you for, thank you for bringing me Well, there's many times, boy, many times I'll say, honey, honey, um, we're short. Uh, <laughs> and he'll go buy peanut butter, you know, but he'll come <laughs> home with 20 peanut butter That's and awesome. we'll make it. <laughs> That's awesome. I want to give you guys time to uh, just intermingle with them and we'll get ready for our next service. Okay. Tammy, thank you so thank much. You. Be ready to do this again in 15 minutes. Okay. All right. God bless Let's, you. We'll You're see dismissed. if technology works, right? <laughs> it'll, it'll, it'll work, work now. Then. We're set. Yeah. You're dismissed. Thank you.